Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know there's so much to talk about, including the fact that it's our 1,000th episode of Ag PhD. Yep, I'm super excited about that. But you know, I'm also excited to talk about spray droplet size today. It is incredibly important that you get great spray coverage on your farm, but you've also got to reduce drift. So we're going to talk about how that fits in with spray droplet size on today's show. And one other thing you'll be out in the field looking for is visual nutrient deficiencies. And I know it's tough to pick one of these out from the other, but one good way you could do it is plant tissue testing. We'll talk about using plant tissue analysis and trying to determine what's going on with some of these plants that don't quite look right. As always, we've got a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Today, it's episode 1000 for Ag PhD TV. First of all, we want to say thanks to you because with you not watching, we would not be here. And you know, we just wanted to give you a little background on why we started Ag PhD years ago. And actually, I pulled out what were our very first topics, Darren. And you might be interested to hear. Well, 19 we, years ago, yep, there were a lot of years things ago, different. We talked about Venus Mallow. We talk about that still today. It's still a big problem. Hasn't gone we, away in 19 years. Early herbicide application in the spring. We still talk about that all the time. But here are a couple of things that are a little bit different. Number one is seed corn planter box treatments. Okay, back then we had maybe one fungicide on the seed, no insecticide. Well, today pretty much all seed corn comes with a bunch of stuff right on it. So it's not as important to put something on in the planter box. And the other thing is biotech soybeans. Roundup Ready beans were just getting going way back then. Kind of interesting. The other thing is we were in the studio with suit coats back 19 years ago. Oh yeah, I'm glad, we're I'm glad we went today. away from that. And <laughs> and you know, that that is a nice thing, being out in the field more. And uh, our camera equipment has certainly changed to allow uh, for HD footage and 4K footage. Uh, you know, really nice pictures of, of farms and fields and equipment running. Uh, it's one of the things I really enjoy. All right, let's talk about why we got started doing this years ago. So Darren and I have been agronomists for a really long time now, and we were doing seminars in the middle of the winter time just talking to farmers about some of the same things we talk about here on Ag PhD and our dad had just suggested you know you guys are doing all this traveling and everything else we could actually start a TV show and I thought yeah we could but man that'd be a lot of work dad and we're already super busy we got the farm and you know business things going on we're swamped and he said nope I really think you guys should look into it and we did and here we are 19 20 years later well we've been really blessed along the on the ways with a lot of TV stations that wanted to carry our program, certainly with RFD TV uh, and what they've done for us. And Yeah, and I guess I just wanted to say thanks to Patrick for having us on RFD TV. We started with them on day one and all these local stations as well. We're on so many local stations. We just really appreciate all the support. You know, it, it's been interesting too on the farm as equipment's changed and practices have changed. We like learning and we want our farm to be better. We want to raise higher yields on the land that we farm. And that's really what drives us with the show is, all right, what are we looking at? What can we look at? What methods could we use to be more profitable on our farm, to be more environmentally responsible, to, to raise these high yields that we're shooting for? Uh, and we talk about those things every week on Ag PhD. Yep, and we've done a brand new half hour show every week for the last 19 years. And that's where we are today with show number 1000. So we wanna thank you again for watching, hopefully uh, for many years in the past, and we'll be on, we certainly intend to be on for many years to come. Well, one of the reasons our show needs to stay on is we still have tough weeds to control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Tired of that old warped poly boom ruining your spray applications? Express Boom from Hypro is a fully assembled stainless steel boom that ensures an even application of chemicals every time. Don't wait another season, upgrade today. Hypro, helping you spray better. We've got teams all over talking about low salt, micronutrient, 
high-efficiency fertilizer teams like it's something new. What's your take? I tell you, Don, AgroLiquid team has had these technologies for over 30 years. And really, unprecedented application versatility, compatibility, and ease of use. So, they're your pick for the championship season. You bet. Their full line of nutrients is going to take them all the way to the root zone. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Thanks, Don. Dave, after the impressive turnaround last year, what are your plans for the coming season? Well, as you know, I changed teams mid-season last year. Now I know my agro-liquid partners are ready to go to work. I'm completely happy with the performance and the level of dedication I get from agro-liquid. From the guys in the field? Everyone at agro-liquid. I believe agro-liquid has me on the road to success. There you have it, Don. Dave has a plan for another championship season with agro-liquid. They're my pick, too. Agro-liquid's going all the way. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Hopefully your crop is up now, even way up in the northern part of the country, your corn or soybeans. As soon as that pops out of the ground, we want to start thinking about evaluating what your plants look like in terms of nutrients, and then also running plant tissue analysis because, let's face it, by the time you see a nutrient deficiency, you've already lost a bunch of yield. There's a couple different ways to look at plant tissue analysis. One could be, I'm going to do something this year with a foliar feed, I'm going to use the plant tissue test to direct what I'm going to apply. But more commonly, we're seeing farmers look at a trend over the season with plant tissue tests and then adjusting their fall soil applied program. With corn or wheat, any of the grass crops, a lot of them take their nutrients up fairly early in the season or start in a big way fairly early in the season. And we do see some differences out there. So we usually encourage you as soon as that corn comes out of the ground in the spring or spring wheat, we would tell you start tissue sampling very soon after. On our own farm, we'll usually wait a week to 10 days, something like that, and then we'll get started with tissue sampling. With soybeans and many of the broadleaf crops, we usually wait about a month and then we start tissue sampling. And what we really encourage you to do is, I'd rather have you take fewer spots in fewer fields, but do it more often than take a whole bunch of spots just one time during the summer. What we're trying to figure out here is how are your nutrients tracking as you go throughout the summer? What I often tell people that have never done plant tissue analysis before is just take the best area in a particular field and the worst area in that same field. Do plant tissue analysis in those two spots separately all summer long, geo-reference them or put a big flag up so you go back to the exact same spot all the time and also have soil test data from those exact same spots. And then by the end of the summer, when you've got your soil test information from last fall, you've got your tissue test information from all summer long in the good spot and the bad spot, you should be able to figure out why the good area is good and why the bad area is bad. Certainly some farmers will look at one test and be wildly influenced by rainfall. Uh, if you got a good shot of rain just a few days ahead of when you pulled that test, well, it's going to look like all kinds of nutrients got into the plant and, hey, everything is rosy. But then as soon as that rain goes away and that instant flush of nutrients happens or, or is done happening, now we go back to reality of, hey, we're struggling with one thing or the next. Now, you may say, well, hold on. I don't need this. I do a good job soil sampling. That's great. But it's a whole nother kind of test to do a plant tissue test to see, okay, we've got this in the soil, but what is our crop actually able to get out of the ground? Because what happens sometimes is you may see a visual nutrient deficiency in your crop. So using a soil test in conjunction with the plant tissue analysis and then identifying any visual symptoms as well 
is the best program to manage those nutrients for your farm. So Darren mentioned earlier, you can use this to adjust things for next year, which is commonly what we're doing on our farm. However, if you have a good way to get nutrients out during the season, you can do some foliar feeding. You can put some on with a side dress application. You can put some more nutrients on with irrigation. There are a number of different ways to do it. But by the time you actually figure out, oh, in my plant tissue analysis, I'm running low, well, you know what? You may have lost yield already by that point because just think about even the turnaround time in this. All right, you run a plant tissue analysis. It takes a few days to get the results back. It takes you a couple more days before you look at the results and make a change. You could be 10 days later from when the actual nutrient deficiency started happening. Well, the other thing is just getting those nutrients into the plant. So even if you get out there right away, maybe you're thinking, well, I'm gonna run with the dry fertilizer because it's a little cheaper, and then you don't get rain for a week. Then yep. all of a sudden, what good did you do? You, you haven't done anything, you haven't solved that problem, and now you win another week uh, with that plant suffering. Yeah, and it's the same kind of thing with potassium and phosphorus. If you don't have good soil levels of those, well, they really don't move in soil hardly at all, unless you had very light soil with a lot of rainfall. So realistically, are you going to get a lot of phosphorus and potassium into that plant? Probably not through foliar feeding, unless you were gonna do a whole bunch of foliar feeding real often. Here's the other thing too, is, is by doing soil testing and plant tissue testing, when you look at both results and you see, wow, I've got some manganese in my soil, I'm short of manganese in my plant, what's happening? It could be that you've got some kind of tie up in your situation where an agronomist can help you or at least direct you down the right path of, oh, if you're really high in this nutrient, that could cause a tie up here. Also, you could see, you know what? My pH is way out of whack. And if your soil is way too far on the acid side or way too far on the high pH side, you may need to get that fixed first to release those nutrients and let them be available for the plant. All right, here's one last thing that I'll share with you. Many of the testing labs have just taken all the results they've gotten over the years and said, all right, in the middle, that's what we're now gonna call medium. On the high end, that's what we're gonna call high, and on the low end, that's what we're gonna call low. Well, is that really low, medium, or high? I don't think so, because think about who usually sends plant tissue analysis in. It's a lot of agronomists, seed reps, chemical people, whatever, who identify a problem in a field and now they send problems in. So I'm just trying to say, we don't really know exactly where your level should be if you wanna raise 300 bushel corn or 400 bushel corn or something like that. So that's why it's a good idea to start keeping records yourself. What were the levels at what stage of development, at what growing degree days, that kind of thing. That's what a lot of the high yield farmers are doing around the country and that's what we'd encourage you to take a look at as well. Well, and here's a program that just takes a little bit of time. It only takes about five minutes to pull a plant tissue test. Maybe it takes you two minutes to package it up and send it off hey, and it takes you five minutes to read the yeah, results. But one quick thing about that if you have dirt on the leaves we encourage you to take distilled water and rinse the leaf off. Not tap water, distilled water. Dirt on the leaf sample will skew the data some so make sure your leaves are clean, send it in a paper bag, pretty simple. My point was it doesn't take much time. A tissue test costs somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 bucks. Uh, and a soil test only costs in the neighborhood of 25 or 30 bucks. So it doesn't cost much money to do this. It just takes a little bit of time to really up your game, to manage your dollars you're spending on fertility on your farm, and hopefully maximize your yield and profitability. One of the other things you need to do to up your game is control weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Dealers, repair shops, and other ag parts resellers, this message is for you. Looking to save money on your parts purchases? Parts Express can help. We have over 3,000 popular items for tractors and combines priced at a level to save you and your customers money. In this tough ag economy, who wouldn't want to save on parts? Parts Express prides itself with old-fashioned service and easy-to-do business with environment. Go to parts-exp.com to see our parts offering and become a Parts Express dealer today. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know.
Side dressing nitrogen? Applying nitrogen over the row boosts nitrogen uptake and efficiency. 360 Y-Drop places nitrogen at the base of the plant, not like Coulter systems that put it down the center of the row. With Y-Drop, a small amount of moisture moves nitrogen into the root zone for rapid uptake. Getting more bushels out of your nitrogen investment is important. 360 Y-Drop lets you apply nitrogen later in the season so you know exactly how much N is needed to finish the crop strong. Learn more at 360yieldcenter.com. One of the biggest yield limiting factors on farms is even crop emergence, and only one closing wheel will get your growing season started right. Furrow Cruiser spiked closing wheels from Copperhead Ag are proven to yield better than standard rubber tire and cast iron closing wheels in all conditions. With yield gains that give you a return on investment the first season, there's no reason to run a standard closing system again. Visit CopperheadAG.com today to get your 2017 growing season started right. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Spray droplet size. This is incredibly important if you want good spray coverage on the one side with a smaller droplet, yet you want to reduce drift, so you probably want a larger droplet. How do you decide what to do? Well, one of the challenges gets to be if you've got multiple products in the tank. Then sometimes you say, well, I want to spray a fungicide, but I also want to spray Roundup, and I don't want the Roundup to drift, but the fungicide needs to be a small particle. Hey, there may be cases where that tank mix just doesn't make sense, and you may have to make two applications in order to get the most out of each one, and you say, what? I don't have time for that. Really? You don't have time? You think about how fast you can spray 100 acres. It may only take an hour, depending on your equipment, or maybe a couple of hours and uh, to run back over that field, spend a couple of hours to actually make things really work, that takes a lot less time than a respray situation. Well, yeah, but Darren, you might be held up for a few days because let's say you do the herbicide first, you can't go spray a fungicide right away. You can't just go follow and repeat two hours later and throw the fungicide on, that's not gonna work. So this gets to be the real challenge. And in a lot of cases, I'm gonna tell guys, I just throw the things together. But I'd look at what are you really trying to accomplish, number one. So if there's a very high priority, number one, and that's a small spray droplet, and a pretty low priority, number two, that's a big spray droplet, well, then I gotta think a little bit. And I gotta say, okay, I need the small spray droplet, but small spray droplets mean I'm going to have more drift. So. If I'm gonna have small spray droplets, what does that mean for wind speed? Now all of a sudden, instead of going in a 10 mile an hour wind, maybe I wanna go in a two mile an hour wind. The other thing, maybe you just slow down your sprayer. Now this is one of those spots where, okay, I'll change a tip or I'll change this or that, but I'm still gonna run 12 miles an hour. Not if you wanna do the best job out there. You may have to slow down and run a little bit slower when you're going across the field. And, and when you think about, oh man, it's gonna add a lot of time to my job. It is gonna add some, but you think about it, refilling a lot of times takes up a good chunk of your time. And it's not necessarily I'm gonna to have to refill more, it's just oh, I'm gonna drive a little bit slower. Maybe instead of 12 miles an hour, I find that at eight miles an hour, I can do a really good job and I'm getting the droplets to land where I need them. Well, the other thing that I look at is switching your spray nozzles as you get inside the field. So borders around the field, I might just sacrifice a little bit of coverage, sacrifice a little bit of weed and disease control and say, you know what, I got a neighbor right over here. I'm gonna be extra safe, switch spray nozzles, go with a larger droplet, it's gonna hit the ground. But once I get out in the field and I'm 180 or 120 feet out in the field, you know what, now I'm a lot safer, now I can switch nozzles. Okay, my last point is just talk to your neighbors. Find out what they've got across the fence. If you've got some conflicts there of, oh, he's got this trait, I've got a different trait, we're gonna be spraying different herbicides. Hey, that's great to know up front. That way your neighbor knows what's going on and so do you. And if you see, oh boy, maybe there is just a hair uh, of drift coming right into my fence rows. Uh, and you know, oh, we've got the same things, we're spraying the same things, no big deal. Or, you know, hey, I, I really need to shut the sprayer off because I know my neighbor has a sensitive crop. And the last point I've got is you've got to know what your product is. If you're using something that has volatility, like Dicamba or 2,4-D, or something where you're you know, pretty concerned about drift, like let's say it's an HPPD or especially Roundup, you know what, in those cases, I'm gonna to try to have a little bit bigger spray droplet. If I'm after coverage, 
I have something like Gramoxone, Liberty, a fungicide, and I need great spray coverage, that's where I want the smaller spray droplet. So if I can, I want to use a different nozzle. Well, which droplet size would you need to control our Weed of the Week? We'll show you which products and droplet size might work best coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is Volunteer Roundup Ready Corn. So you're not gonna control this Volunteer Corn with Roundup, you're going to need something else. Here's the good news. The products you're going to need to control these, uh, these Volunteer Corn plants, they're dirt cheap. We're talking two bucks an acre. So the big thing that we wanted to stress to you today is spray them as soon as you see them. Don't let them get big and rob your yield. But you do have to let them get a little bit of size to them. And here's the thing, when you've got volunteer corn and the growing point is down well below the ground, if you're out there at one leaf corn trying to fry it off, sometimes you aren't gonna have success. Well, you may wanna see just a little bit more growth on it before Well, that spray. was the whole key there. If you're using something like, let's say it's Liberty, Gramoxone, any of those types of things, uh, that's just not going to work very well because you don't get into that growing point. You need something systemic. That's where we're talking about something like Fusilade, a sure to secure one of those types of products. And I love it when the volunteer corn is small. I want it an inch tall, but you have to get great spray coverage. Darren made mention just a little bit earlier and we were talking about spray droplet size. Well, to control weeds, the answer is always small spray droplets. They always give you better spray coverage. If I can take a smaller droplet, it's going to cover more overall area and that's the challenge here a lot of times guys start running 15 gallons of water per acre and they've got droplets that end up landing on the ground well that does you no good and droplets that run off do you no good i'd rather have you lower your water volume down a little bit run smaller spray droplets you'll get better results Here's the other key to killing volunteer corn, it's the adjuvants. You need to have an oil in there. With some of the products, they'll like methylated seed oil, some will like crop oil. Uh, I really like having oil in there. That drives it into yeah, that absolutely. leaf Absolutely, it's definitely going to be better than non-ionic surfactant. Another quick question we get is guys trying to kill off corn, gonna replant corn, doesn't work if you're gonna use Select, Assure, something like that. Look at the restriction. You're probably talking seven to 10 days out. There is a tiny amount of residual, only a tiny amount, but you can't plant corn immediately the day after you've sprayed. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. 
Nature, it's powerful technology. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in walks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. There's a lot of equipment used in today's agriculture, but one of my favorite pieces of equipment is the subject of today's Iron Talk. If you're new to watching Ag PhD, you may not have noticed it yet, but my brother likes to pick on me just a little bit from time to time. One thing he doesn't make fun of anymore is the fact that almost every time I enter a field, I'm carrying my trusty tile spade. Scouting what's happening above ground is important, but I also like to see the other half of the plant that's below ground. Plus, there's so much more of the story of the field that you can only learn by doing a little digging. Here's a short list of the things I check on a regular basis in our fields and others I visit. Compaction. You can tell a lot simply by pushing the shovel in the ground. Topsoil depth. Has there been any erosion? What potential does the field have? And much more. Subsoil. What does the subsoil look like? Are you farming on sand or clay? It makes a big difference. Moisture levels. Is the crop suffering from too much or too little water? Will nutrients become available soon? Insects. Whether it's wireworms, grubs, rootworms, or even just earthworms, bugs can give you a good idea what's happening in a field. The root system. I always like to see the roots of the plants that I'm scouting. Planter issues. What does seeding depth look like and was the seed planted into good conditions? Tillage issues. Is the tillage floor flat? Are there gaps? How deep did you really work the ground? And the list goes on and on. There are so many things to watch for in fields and carrying a tile spade or whatever your favorite kind of shovel is costs nothing and helps you see and learn so much. I encourage you, keep some sort of shovel with you on every visit to your fields. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, thanks for tuning in today to our 1,000th episode of Ag PhD TV. During this week, we invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show if you're looking for more agronomic information. You'll find us each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM Channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.